All right, guys, Coach Pete here with another uh, training tip uh, from our training series on 619 Muscle TV. Uh, today, what you're gonna see is a very cool video. Um, I got to share chest training with one of my guys, uh, Ryan Cullenward. He's a top finalist uh, this year at the NPC USA's. Works very hard, he's also a trainer and a coach here. Uh, a little bit of history with Ryan and I. Um, a little bit less than a year ago, he came to me and had requested uh, my guidance and um, ideas on how to build his upper chest specifically. Now for many people, um, chest is bench pressing, incline bench pressing, flat bench dumbbells and cable movements. Simple stuff. A chest development um, can sometimes be genetic, but overall, um, targeting that upper chest specifically is something that is elusive to many people. Many people, because we've always done push-ups since we were kids, if we're into fitness, we've always done bench pressing, um, some of the basic things, build the pec major, but they build the pec major in a way that really targets the mid chest and doesn't always focus necessarily on that top shelf, which is what everybody wants to build that 3D, that round, thick look, front to back, not just side to side and broad. So we're not only looking for width, we're looking for depth and thickness to build that three-dimensional bubbly look that's now what's winning physique contests these days in bodybuilding, classic, and in physique. Um, so with Ryan, if you take a look at his changes specifically, his chest is just tremendously improved. And you know, it is really a big part of his nutrition. It's also a big part of his work ethic and focus on the training. What you're gonna see today in this video is the different exercises that we have done with some intensifying techniques that are designed to isolate that specifically the clavicular region or the upper part of the pec major. Now even though you can't, there's, there's not a separate muscle specifically between the uh, upper chest and the mid chest, you have the pec major and the pec minor which together combine to make the overall pec region. By targeting both specifically, what you end up doing is creating a lift to the pec major with the pec minor running underneath it with certain specific movements. But more importantly, you can isolate and stimulate somewhat the clavicular region or the upper part of the chest, especially the inner part as it moves outward along the clavicle, kind of. And I say that because really you can't specifically break down and train just one piece of the chest. The entire pec major and pec minor contract through most movements um, as a unit. But what we did is we took a movement that stimulates overall uh, general warmth, blood flow to the chest, and that's just the general cable crossover. And when we warmed up with it, we actually started in a decline angle, which is gonna put blood throughout the area. It's gonna put blood in the chest, in the shoulders, in the triceps, and bring a lot of circulation. So that way we're safe and we're ready to smash as we move on into our heavy movements. And our second movement was actually a combination movement. We did a very slight angled incline Smith machine press. We did that with moderate weight, but with the weight um, augmented by intensifying techniques. There are three different intensifying techniques that we used. We used, we used uh, slow concentric reps, we used slow eccentric reps, and then we used them in combination along with ballistic pumping reps at the end of our heaviest set on, on our um, incline Smith press. We did that to really start to bring um, the mental connection and isolation to the upper part of the chest through the pec major clavicular region. Now, we didn't leave it at that because what I wanted to do is to exhaust the entire chest so that we bring the muscle several times during each exercise to the point of momentary muscular failure. Because once you hit momentary muscular failure where the muscle is exhausted, that's where you're getting maximum stimulation to the different muscle fiber types throughout the target muscle region. So in this case, if we hit momentary muscular failure with specifically slow reps or slow concentric, slow eccentric reps, and then we flip right away to ballistic type reps or more explosive movements. We're targeting different muscle fiber types through that complex exercise. After we do that, I have the guys head back over to do cable crossovers. The cable crossovers in the second round, not the warm-up component, but the second combination, we did with a slightly higher mid to upper chest targeting. So we changed the angle slightly on the cable crossover movement. We kept the reps high, around 15 reps, with a peak contraction squeeze, which is another intensifying technique. But we really wanted to focus on stimulating and targeting the muscle contraction and the mind-muscle connection within that clavicular region of the upper pec. So that's the first and second and third exercise really all together. We moved on to our next exercise. Our next exercise was the incline dumbbell fly. Basic movement. Do it very carefully with a nice 
stretch at the bottom so you get a full range of motion and then I have the guy squeeze at the top for a three second hold. That peak contraction really does target stimulating all of the muscle fibers as the fatigue starts to increase through the entire set. We choose a weight where the guys are going to be able to do good form somewhere around eight to ten repetitions maybe a little bit more repetitions in the first set or two so that their fatigue will start to slowly build. Now again the goal is throughout the second, third and fourth sets to hit momentary muscle failure but we want to throw in a little bit of an intensifier. So we did a post exhaust incline dumbbell press, which will incorporate some of the auxiliary assistive muscles, the front delts and the, the triceps as well. So that as we push through, we take the upper pec, specifically that inner clavicular area from fatigue through the fly and the isolation movement. And then we allow the front delts and the triceps to kick in and assist to bring you deeper into momentary muscular failure. That's really what's going to bring in much, much more stimulation. So you get total muscle failure by the time you're done with the presses, even with the assistance of those ancillary muscles so that you're able to smash that target region. Now we did that for three or four sets as we progress and as the guy started to fatigue. Now we move on to our next exercise, which is a very basic flat bench movement. Now the guys are already fatigued, so we decided to do this on a flat machine. Specifically here at the Gym San Diego, we have an arsenal press. It's a flat press angle. It's really stable and it's really safe. So we can go deep, go really heavy, and challenge the muscles while the stabilizing muscles are already fatigued. This is a fun machine, and we can actually add some intensifiers to it, which we did. Now that the upper chest, the target muscle, that clavicular region of the pec major, is fatigued, now we shift into just generally smashing of the entire chest with good form but along the four sets that we did, first we did a high volume one to failure, momentary muscular failure through the endurance fibers, and then we moved on to three heavy sets that were very challenging. And we pulled from old school Arthur Jones method, uh, some of the old Nautilus type stuff, where what we did is we push hard over a slow concentric rep, but not super slow, somewhere around one to two seconds on the contraction. Then we hold for a peak contraction a full two seconds with a three to five second negative. That was on the first and the second of the heavy sets in that flat bench exercise. Then the finishers, where we went a little bit heavier, we did a little bit more uh, ballistic or explosive repetitions with a rest pause style. We start from the bottom position in a full stretch and then we explode up aggressively to really recruit those explosive fibers. Now those explosive fibers become fatigued very quickly, but the great thing is, with all of the fatigue that these guys have cumulative through the entire training program so far, all of the different pieces of the chest are being fatigued. At the top end, we have them squeeze and hold for two seconds and then a three to five second eccentric phase with the emphasis actually me giving them additional eccentric resistance. So this way here, we're digging deep into that strongest portion of the movement, which is the eccentric phase. After the guys did two sets of that, they were smashed. This was a super intense part of the program. It's heavy, it's explosive, but it's also got a component of endurance in it as well. So we're getting all of the different muscle fiber types targeted specifically and very deliberately through the entire set. Meanwhile, with an emphasis on safety, because you never want to get these guys, their top level athletes, um, injured. And so we're very careful as we apply heaviness and fatigue in a specific combination. Next, we moved on to our final exercise, our finisher, which is a modified close grip pressing movement on the assisted pedal of the pull-up machine. Now you could do this on a bar or you could do this on any type of uh, flat bench machine. I like to do this one because it allows a little bit more dynamic motion. So you're actually getting not only um, a flat bench angle, but you're also getting a slight decline angle as the athlete fatigues. They're starting to lift up, get a little bit looser with their form, but that allows you to dig deep into the pec minor, which is that underneath decline press angle. The great thing about this, we intensified it by making this exercise a century set. Now century set, we call it a century set because it's 100 repetitions in a row. But it's not 100 repetitions with a light weight. It's actually, you want to choose a weight where you're going to hit all of the endurance fibers first in a range somewhere between maybe 15 to 30 repetitions. And then rest when you fail, when you hit momentary muscle failure, you're going to rest for about five seconds. Jump right back in as you perform the century set. You jump right back in with the same weight or only slightly lighter weight. So you're gonna perform somewhere between 10 and 15 repetitions. As you continue, fatigue will continue to build 
very slight rest periods at every point of momentary muscle failure. During a century set, you should expect to fail probably somewhere between five to eight times, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, the first time the endurance fibers start to fatigue and then as you work your way through the intermediate fibers and finally those explosive uh, high intensity um, short range fibers, you're getting every aspect of the muscle targeted through the entire 100 reps with several different segments of real deep momentary muscle failure. The century sets are fun. They're not something that you're going to do just 100 reps and wow that's cool because it's 100 reps. It's specifically planned with intervals around at first 15 to 30 and then down slowly through the entire process of the 100 reps even as down as low as 8 to 10 repetitions per set. So at the end of it you're looking at about 8 sets where each time you're hitting aggressive momentary muscle failure. That wraps it up as far as chest goes. We smash it starting from top to bottom through the entire chest with the different angles that we hit with our hand placement and the different volume. You're getting every muscle fiber from every angle, the flies, the presses, the close grip at the end, your chest will be annihilated. These guys are going to be sore for several days. If you look at Ryan's before and after pictures, tremendous change has occurred because of his discipline, his training ethic, and I like to think too because really of the different conscientiously applied um, program structure. He's done amazing. He's really um, one of the guys that really um, elicits the benefits of training in this way. Well, there you have it. That's top shelf chest building in a package. I hope you liked it. I hope you've um, benefited in some way from it. If you have any questions further, feel free to contact me and definitely we'll see you in the gym. Oh, and don't forget, the next episode, we're going to be breaking down more specifically the intensifying techniques that Ryan and Jake actually, we use together as we smash their chest to oblivion. Uh, this is going to be fun. The next video is going to really show you how you can bring every piece of your training to the next level for maximum results. That's really the goal. Have fun in the gym and we'll see you there.